everyone welcome back my name is Therese and welcome to my July bullet journal plan with me video this is my new notebook for the second half of 2023 I recently published my mid-year bullet journal setup in this beautiful Archer and Olive notebook so you can check out the video later for some ideas and see how the spreads turned out I'll have it linked down on the description box below. Okay, get yourself comfy because this is going to be a long video. So let's start with our very first monthly cover page in this notebook. As always, we're doing painted illustration and we're gonna be using watercolors again. I am mainly using this number 6 round brush that came with the Van Gogh watercolor set that was gifted to me by Royal Talents. But you can definitely use any watercolor paints you have. My theme for July is summer camping and my idea for this cover is actually using two pages. With the illustration we are about to paint, I thought it would be fun to make it interactive again. Unlike my previous painting processes where I try to mix colors and establish a color scheme for the entire setup, I honestly don't know yet what colors I want to use, so I just decide along the way. There are other possible set of colors for this theme anyway, so you can also use different colors that look summery for you. I looked up for a nature view inside a tent and there are so many pictures you can find as reference. I gathered a lot of pictures too and combined the elements that I want to form the whole composition. So we are starting on the front page where we are only painting the inside of a tent. I'm using a mix of blue, green, and white to paint the base of the tent structure. Obviously, I already sketched this with a pencil. It's always a useful guide to how you want your painting to look like. The tent itself is not complicated to draw, but only making sure that both sides are as symmetrical as possible. I always do this by determining the center, counting how many spaces for the margins, and how thick the whole frame will be. There are different shapes of camping tents, we're specifically going for the common dome type and we also have these little rolls like curtains on the insides. So there's a flat base color and then we're adding a bit of paint gray to the mix to make the color a bit darker. And this is what we are using to add shadows and details to our tent. Usually, I like to paint the initial layers first for the entire illustration, especially when the paper is slightly coated, just like my previous notebook therapy journal. And if you recall, I mentioned about noticing a change in the paper where the watercolor is kind of sitting on top. But since I moved to this Archer and Olive notebook where the pages quickly absorbs water and dries quickly, I decided to add the shadows and details already so I can move on to the rest of the elements without going back to do this step. Since I was used to paint on a semi-coated paper, I forgot that this one is uncoated, so I was going to take my time a bit but then I realized that and had to work really fast to try to even out the colors. This may be a con for you if you like to work on your watercolor painting slowly, but for me it's somehow an advantage because I can be impatient sometimes, <laughs> so this minimizes the waiting time. With a darker shade, we are able to create depth and to separate the elements that we are painting on the foreground. You guys know me, I love incorporating cozy things in my themes, so to give some coziness to this illustration, we are painting lantern, books, a map, binoculars, and a backpack. This time I'm using red, 
yellow and brown to add contrast. However, the green book and the map were kind of getting swallowed in the picture because of similar colors I used, but it's okay. And I wanted to add some more tiny paintings like a cup of coffee and hanging lights, but maybe for another time or theme. <laughs> I've been using a lot of cool tones lately in my paintings. They're honestly refreshing to look at because it has been really hot and I'm sweating so much while setting this one up. It affects me in some way, I guess. But that's the first part of our cover illustration. We will then cut out the white space using a paper pen cutter so it becomes like a window to the illustration on the page behind. Always put a cutting board or anything thick at the back. In my case, I only used the backing board of a watercolor pad. Then I'm simply adding the July title under the painting using these lowercase wooden stamps. If you're curious about the supplies I'm using, they are always listed on the video description along with my discount codes if you're interested to get any of these. Alright, before we do the second part of this cover, let's create a very simple calendar. I painted the background slightly with the same color as the tent and a small and easy layout for the calendar. I don't really have a lot going on for July, so I won't need a bigger calendar this time, but having a separate section for events below will be a good addition for some surprise occasions maybe just in case, though I doubt there will be, but it's better this way. I made these coffee stained paper today, so I'm going to add these as ripped decorations to the spreads. I've used these in the past and they are so easy to make. I would usually dry them under the sun or using a blow dryer, but for this batch, I just set them aside somewhere in the floor where I film my videos since it feels like an oven here. <laughs> If you're not a fan of many white spaces, adding ripped papers like these will make your spread look interesting. But let's flip over to the other side of this cutout. This is a perfect place to add some extra sections. For example, I'm using this to create a list of fun things to do this July. I stamped the title just beneath the cutout. I know a couple letters from the events are peaking, but it's okay. It can be hard to place the letters in perfect alignment since the rubbers are not either. Anyway, below I decided to list 7 fun things I'd like to do with my son this coming month. We will attach ripped coffee stained paper here again that is covering pretty much the upper part of this page. It's the actual shape where I ripped off the ones I used in the previous spread, so I just kept it as it is since the curvy area on it matches the cutout on the page nicely. But I only cut a small corner here since we're painting another illustration for the second part of the cover which is a view of the mountains, lake, tall trees, and summer flowers. Let's attach some washi tapes to keep the edges clean and straight, then we will begin painting the meadows. We're starting with some soil showing around here using brown and the base of the grassland with a light consistency of olive green. With darker shade, we will paint small strokes of grass farther away and getting longer as we get close to the edge. We're painting bigger grass that are growing in different directions. Some may be shorter in length or bent, but we don't really need to think about precision much here. I have some flowers in mind for this. 
I'm not really good yet with painting flower fields with watercolors that will show up nicely so I thought of using gouache paints and make use of their opaque qualities. Unlike watercolors, we don't need to use much water for gouache but gouache can be used as watercolors too depending on the effect that we're trying to achieve. We're mixing this vermilion and a bit of yellow to paint these orange flowers. Having these flowers showing in the cutout would be nice so we'll just flip it back to see where to paint them. We're painting small blobs of this color and even more so that look like dots to vary the sizes of the flowers then using the same yellow paint, we are painting the inner parts. Using a detail brush would be useful or just the very tip of your round brush with light pressure would work just fine. We are only painting these flowers on the left corner but on the right side will be another kind which are lupin flowers. We mixed carmin red, a bit of ultramarine and white to create this lilac color and then using the tip of the brush, we're just lightly painting small messy strokes forming a long pointy shape. On this mixture, I also added some more blue to create purple and paint some more lupin flowers the same way at the back. Then we'll just add some highlights by adding tiny strokes of white on top and we're painting dark shades of green on the background of these flowers so they will appear brighter. Now that we are done on this area, we can move on to painting the lake above the meadows and more greenery surrounding it. I was contemplating about what color to paint the mountains. I wanted it to be the eye-catching part in this painting, so I ended up using burnt sienna. I know it looks unusual to have a brown, rocky, desert-like mountain, a flowering field, and a lake in one picture. But maybe this exists somewhere, I don't know. Anyway, we painted the mountains in triangles with different heights. But of course, we have the highest peak on the center. Using burnt sienna mainly on the left parts and light yellow to the right side as the highlights or where the sun is reflecting. And then we added pigmented burnt sienna on the lower left areas to define the shape of the mountains and to add shadows. Next, we're painting the sky. I wanted to make layers of dreamy and fluffy clouds, so we're going to use gouache again. I mixed yellowish white, lilac, purple, and peach, just using the same set of colors we used for the flowers. We're just painting them layer by layer, having the yellowish white to be the largest and the purple tones behind the mountains. I intentionally left the hard edges on the clouds, but if you would like to make them appear soft, you can just soften them using a damp brush. The last element on this painting are the trees. We're painting these triangular shaped trees as well that complement the shape of the mountains. We start with the lightest part using light green and since we did the highlights on the right side of the mountains, we're doing the same thing here by painting the top with short branches of leaves and going wider to the bottom. In this perspective, we have the bigger trees forward and the smaller ones at a distance. We will then mix some black to darken the shade that we'll use to paint the shadowed areas of the trees. As you can see, I left some white spaces on the right side because we are also distributing dark leaves behind the light ones. And sometimes even the wet paint is already dark on our palette. The value can still change once it dries on paper. So here I felt like the shadows need to be darker a little bit more so I went over them again. For the final touches, I tried to paint the reflection of the mountains on the lake but I'm not sure if it looks good. Also several small faint trees at the foot of the mountains. And that's pretty much it for this illustration. It's time to remove the washi tapes. 
to complete this whole spread will be a small ripped coffee stained paper on the corner and a verse from the scripture that we will write down below from Matthew 7 7 ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened to you this layout is very reminiscent of my March bullet journal home decor theme. A lot of you seem to love that setup too, so this is another theme idea that you can create with almost the same steps. Alright, we are finally done with these cover spreads with calendar and fun things to do list. We can now move forward and create a monthly planning page. Before we get to the functional part of it, let's do another illustration here. I wanted to decorate this part with different camping elements. First is another lantern. We're painting the handle, cap, and base with this warm red color and then add a bit of black on it to paint the shadows. We're using gray for the glass and the burner and the flame glowing inside with yellow and a bit of red. Next is a kettle. I'm using blue-green mix here just to tie it with the whole color scheme we used on the cover. It's also giving a retro feel with these colors. So we have blue-green for the body and burnt sienna for the handle and the lid. Behind the lantern and kettle is a map. We're painting the base with light gray. The shape is like an accordion in a zigzag kind of shape when you open a folded map or brochure or something like that. Then we are blending blue and green to kind of mimic trees and water and then light brown lines to outline the top and bottom of the map. Next we're painting a green rolled sleeping bag with brown straps. Likewise, we're painting the base lightly and the shadows are applied around the straps and the inside of the roll that is visible on the edge to the right. Lastly is a box of matches that we're painting with brown and red. So these are just graphic elements we formed into one composition but there are different camping gears and stuff that you can paint as well aside from these. I'm having my focus section beside the illustration. I usually like to list three top priorities each month. On the other half of the page will be for my goals. I'm using the same layout that I've been using for months now where there are separate spaces for writing my objectives and the steps I need to take in order to achieve each goal. I decided to color the boxes alternately with watercolors, but you can definitely use a brush marker for this. I'm using a highlighter to draw thick lines as the background for the writing spaces on my focus list and these imperfect grid lines on the rest of the goals boxes. I just love the muted colors of these pens, but then again you can use any pen to draw them. I numbered them as well and wrote actions on the longer boxes. I have this interactive idea for my habit tracker. It's been a while since I've done an interactive layout and I think I always consider if it matches my theme and if I have the energy for it. This month, it checks both, so at last, I'm making it again. So we have this small watercolor paper and we're going to paint a backpack. You may have already guessed how it's going to be like. I sketched the backpack first with pencil. The size is about 12 dot spaces long and 11 spaces wide, so it will fit my habit trackers with mini calendars. 
it's always a good idea to have an allowance for these and we're only painting the body of the bag on a watercolor paper the shoulder straps will be painted on the page later on Unlike gouache, I think you really need to get a watercolor paper with great quality. I'm using a 200 GSM Fabriano watercolor paper and maybe I'm doing it wrong but I just don't like the harsh lines that occur once the paint dries on this paper. It also absorbs quickly so I don't recommend it. If you have Canson watercolor paper, that's one of the best so far. But if you happen to not have, you can also do the technique that I did here where I tried to smooth out the harsh lines with a damp brush. We're painting a brown backpack. There are so many styles you can paint for this. And I think the style I painted looked more casual than a camping or hiking backpack in the end. So we have the basic parts such as the top lid, straps, side pockets, one with a water bottle on it, a large lower compartment, and there is also a rolled sleeping bag on the middle. After we finish the painting, we will cut the white spaces out I made my trackers beforehand to save some time. These are easy to make. I just took a blank page from my previous bullet journal and cut six pieces of these. The sizes are 10 by 8 spaces. To hold these happy tracker cards, I took a small leftover colored paper. I folded thin flaps that I will glue onto the back of the backpack painting. Also leave a bit of allowance so you don't need to squeeze everything here and we will then paint the lifter and the shoulder straps with the same color on the page itself. Now we're attaching the other side of the pocket on the page and finally adding the habits title. It's all looking good already with this tracker but stamping the letters can be really annoying especially because the rubbers are not placed equally so this happened. <laughs> but it's already there, I tried to erase the smudges with a wet brush. Though it removed the ink a little bit, I didn't try removing the letter I because it might get worse. So let's just move on. For the most part, I still really enjoyed making this interactive habit tracker. And then we'll also include a mood tracker here. I thought it would be nice to draw flowers around the backpack. We're drawing green leaves first using the Tombow brush pen. Then I'm tracking my moods in these floral drawings. We're drawing variety of flowers, 31 of them. So you can draw anything you like and just doodle them with a black pen. The moods title will be stamped under the habit trackers and I chose five more colors of these brush pens that I'll use to color in my moods. We have the ripped papers again on the corners and we are finally done with this monthly planning and trackers spread. Moving on again will be my playlist page. One of the fun activities when camping is making s'mores, so I thought of painting the ingredients in a recipe or menu style layout. We're painting marshmallows, bars of dark chocolate, graham crackers, and the confection or the sandwich itself. I think everyone knows s'mores now, but I also found these facts on the internet. S'more is a contraction of the phrase some more. It appeared in a campfire marshmallows cookbook in the early 1920s where it was called a graham cracker sandwich. 
The text indicates that the treat was already popular with both Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. In 1927, a recipe for some more was published in Tramping and Trailing with the Girl Scouts. Newspaper recipes began appearing as early as 1925. I loved being a Girl Scout when I was a kid, but I don't really remember toasting anything in the campfire. I've tried s'mores like around 2016 or 2017 for my birthday, and I think it's the only time I've ever had them. <laughs> anyway, talking about the paintings, I think I spent more time with the chocolate bar looking back and forth at my reference photo, just trying to paint what I see, but the rest were pretty easy to paint. On the blank spaces, we are writing the songs. I'm using a 08 black fineliner to write the titles and then a 0.05 for the name of the artist next to the titles. I also thought of adding the lyrics of each song on the empty spaces and the page turned out so nice to see filled in. On top of the coffee stained paper below is where we're stamping the playlist title. And then onto the next page, we are painting another illustration. Sorry for making this setup painting heavy. I think I got fond of the theme so much, but we're painting an actual campfire here. And we're starting with a light yellow base for the fire. The strokes are following the direction of the flame and then we're slowly adding red so it becomes orange. I think I covered the yellow base too much and I painted them in the opposite because the flame should look brighter on the inside and redder or darker on the outside. So this was a failed attempt to paint but nevertheless it still looked like fire. <laughs> I'll try to get it right next time. But then we are painting the burning logs using a dark brown. Then there are also some orangey sections that are glowing. The fire is surrounded by rocks. We're painting the first layer with warm gray. And then we're loading our brush with a darker tone to paint the contour of the rocks. The fire painting dried up pretty light so we'll just quickly go back to add more red to the flame. And next we are painting some more marshmallows. The main part of the marshmallows are white but since we are painting on a white page, we are adding a tinge of orange. Then we will paint the sides with warm gray. And lastly are the brown sticks. These doesn't have to be straight since these can be branches of a tree. Okay, I'm also painting this soil or ground under the rocks and that finishes this illustration. Above it will be the Into the Word title and as always, I'm using this for my devotional spreads. This month, I chose this 7-day plan by Matt Tomey entitled The Artist Mindset Makeover. I got intrigued by the description where it says, how to practically start renewing your mind to overcome the biggest lies artists believe about themselves, God, art, money, and what's possible. I'm curious about it, so I look forward to reading it this July. And I will be needing 7 spreads for the whole plan and I wanted to make them into horizontal Dutch doors. I normally cut the parts I don't need but in this case, there are so many pages and they might come off the binding so I just glued them all together. Though it may feel a bit bulky but it's okay, 
Some of you asked how I use these spreads. I usually just write some notes or a summary of what I read and the scriptures that spoke to me. In this setup, I decided to include the SOAP method or writing the scripture, observation, application, and prayer. I think with this, there's more structure to this whole spread, so I'll give it a try. The next spread we are making is my weekly layout. I decided to go for two pages with boxes. I'm drawing seven of these simple boxes and colored the background of the days and dates with green watercolor. I've used this layout in the past. It's just nice to revisit past layouts, especially when you can think of a new one. <laughs> Then we will have week 27 stamped on the blank space here and a mini calendar. There's a few more cutting situation here but only a couple spaces out on the edge of each page. I'm also adding these verse of the week and notes sections above the daily boxes using highlighters. Oh, I almost forgot to write the days and dates here so we'll quickly add them. We're setting up the first weekly spread for the meantime and I wanted to paint a weekly illustration as well but let's set up the month in review spread first so we can focus on that afterwards. I enjoyed the layout from last month where I used colored papers. This layout is again inspired by the memory spread idea by Viv of Monday Morning Design. Instead of using colored papers, we're just painting some of the boxes with watercolors and the rest are grid lines using highlighters. What's more fun about this is you can do different sizes and fit many questions such as your favorite hobby in July, favorite activity, passage in the scripture, camping doodle, food, emoji of the month, what you're grateful for, small wins, challenges, how can next month be better, and how you would rate the month from 1 to 10. There are so many possible questions you can add here but yeah, that's it for my simple month in review spread. Now let's go back to paint the weekly illustration. We are using a separate watercolor paper that we will attach on this spread later as an extended page just for decoration purposes. Again, this idea is similar to my March weekly layout, but I'm making it the size of the whole page and adding two dot spaces more on the width. We set aside a notebook for now and tape the paper down on the table. We will be painting another scene of an inside of a tent with a nature landscape view. We're using the same colors we used from the cover page illustration and since the picture is bigger than that, we will need a bigger paint brush. I took a number 12 round brush to paint the tent and this time we are making the entrance in an oval shape. So we have the light base color, then the additional layers of a darker shade to paint the shadows and details. These are the tent poles and sheets that are visible from the inside. We're pretty much doing the same principles from the cover illustration, so we're going to speed it up a bit to save some time. This is the last interactive element we're adding here, I promise. I know it's time consuming and I feel like this must be my longest monthly plan with me video but hopefully you somehow enjoyed watching me create them and be inspired by the ideas to add a bit of fun to your pages. We are also painting some more camping stuff and books inside the tent and like I said, the watercolor paper is giving me the struggle here. I was trying to paint the backpack and blend brown and yellow while they are still wet but it's just not happening with this paper. So again, I just smoothed them out with a slightly wet brush and gradually added more layers as I go.
We also have books, one that has open pages on the center, a blanket, a hat, a water bottle, and a map. Then we will move on to the view and this time we are painting a bowl of food and cooking with a little pan and stove outside. We're painting the grassland as well, starting with a light green base and darker green for the grass strokes that are shorter from the distance and getting longer towards the tent. Then our mountain on the middle using the same burnt sienna and yellow and the blue sky. I painted a shadowed angle on the right side of the mountain since I also painted the shadows of the pans and stove on the same side. However, when I got to the trees, I was mindlessly painting the lighter parts on the right side just like in the cover painting which should be on the left. I only realized it when I've already done half of them, so yeah, we have confusing highlights and shadow placements here. <laughs> but anyway, the last thing we are adding here are white flowers using gouache. When the painting is done, we can remove the washi tape and we're just gonna cut the thin white borders on the top and bottom except for the margin on the left part which we're going to fold and glue to the edge of the page of our weekly spread. So this is an idea that you can incorporate if you like to have a bigger space for writing and still have an illustration to look at. This way, you can flip it anywhere in your weekly spreads and you don't have to create a new illustration every other week. But that's finally everything in this very time-consuming and artistic July 2023 bullet journal setup. Even though it is a painting-heavy monthly setup, I still hope you enjoyed watching it and hopefully an idea or two inspired you to try them in your bullet journal. It is summer and it's the best time to go camping and be out there with nature. And if you like this theme, remember to click the like button and subscribe to the channel for more bullet journaling videos. Have an amazing July and I'll talk to you soon in my next video! Bye everyone!